Well, hey guys, we are now joined by Dom and Kevin from Tame Impala. Guys, welcome to kind of backstage at Groove in the Moon. Thanks. It's very cool to have you here. And welcome back to Australia. You haven't been here for a little while, right? Um, we were here for a couple of weeks uh, in America, but needless to say, it's pretty good to be home. Um, yeah, cool. The air is clearer. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just the smell of Australian air is fresh. It's not as polluted or smoggy as, as LA. Um, okay, well, let's talk about Coachella because, of course, um, for those of us who weren't lucky enough to actually be there on the ground, I know I certainly watched the live stream back here in Australia. It looked like a great show. How did you guys enjoy it? Um, it was pretty, uh, it was cool. It was mayhem because there was this, I don't know if you could tell, but the sky is like a, kind of a grey colour. Yeah, was it a dust storm? Or? Yeah, mega dust storm that just picked up like an hour before we started playing. And um, all our stuff was blowing over. The bass guitar blew over just before we went on and snapped like the head off it. So we had to run and borrow Dinosaur Junior's bass. Whoa. Um, and all the stuff was going wrong. And it was, well, we, yeah. Something happened with Jay's key. Was it your keyboard play? Yeah, yeah, his keys stuffed up wow. at numerous uh, occasions during the set. But um, yeah, we, in those times like those, we just kind of. <laughs> I don't know what we do. <laughs> Did you manage to catch some other really cool bands at Coachella? Uh, yes, or Phoenix. Amazing. Yeah, they're amazing. Cool. Very, very polished and super tight. I've never seen Phoenix. I've heard this stuff. It's good. And yeah. then what about um, Danny, your best mate, Danny DeVito? Uh huh. Yeah, we're best <laughs> mates. <now. laughs> um, yeah. Well, it, it, just after the gig, we sort of walked off, going like, "Oh no, that was that was terrible. Everything, nothing worked." Um, and we just come off early, so we were kind of a bit bummed. And then we just saw him like <laughs> walking over to us, and like the whole memory of it, that gig just vanished. Um, the day just totally changed gears at that point. Um, yeah, he, he really loved it. I, I think you know he 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 is a big music fan, yeah. especially Coachella. Yeah, I think it, a lot of people were getting enjoyment from reading Danny DeVito's like one-line tweet reviews of the, of all the bands <laughs> playing at Coachella. So it was a lot of fun. Does he have like stacked shoes so we can see? No, I think he was barefoot actually. He actually has this thing he calls Hobbit foot. Is that it? Troll foot? Troll foot. And he takes a photo of his foot in front of various environments. How are um, American audiences reacting to the new record? Um, really well. Generally, American audiences are really, they're all like, you know, super dedicated music lovers. Yeah. You know, American audiences are just a lot more kind of dedicated, you know, there's no like drinking beer or anything during the, oh, I guess they drink beer, but, you know, some of them travel miles and miles to come to the gig. Some of them come to more than one gig, they just follow the tour bus around. Oh, so did you guys get that this time around? Or yeah, you it's that our for first time. Uh, a few people would just, would just see them out the front of the gig each night with new stuff to sign and stuff. Now, Kevin, lots has been made of um, your production mm. on your records. When you're pulling sounds, are you, do you have a clear idea of what you're trying to achieve or do you just experiment until it sounds really cool and then just go, hey, I like that? It depends, I think. If I have a, if I have a sort of a clear enough idea before I start, I'll probably just sort of try and work towards it, but sometimes I'm kind of just testing the water for whatever sounds cool, you know, just to fill a, fill a space or see what fits, you know. Um, yeah, it varies. It's, it's working, and do you get people calling you up asking you to produce yeah. their records? Is that happening a lot? Um, just my friends, really. <laughs> 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 well, and, you know, like, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm just the... the um, sound nerd of the gang so if someone wants an album mix they usually just sort of give me a USB drive of the tracks and I whip them up and mix. But, um, surprisingly not that many people have asked me to produce their stuff. I don't actually know what I would do if I was a producer, you know, like a full-time producer. Um, yeah, I mean it'd be fun but at the same time I've never really uh, done that kind of production thing with someone that I'm not like friends with already, yeah. you know, because yeah. for me it's that kind of the communication is like, um, you know, it's it's pretty important that you know the person really closely beforehand. Anyway, I just I wouldn't know how to communicate with someone I don't know. Yeah. We talk about 
couple of the of the singles uh, from Lonerism, of course, Elephant, which was the first uh, track released, and of course it did so well, and everybody went completely nuts over. And then, of course, feels like we only go backwards. There's, they kind of sound, I mean, different. Is Elephant kind of from a little while ago, or from a different iteration from from a while ago? Yeah, it is actually. Um... I mean, the, it's just kind of the riff and the vocal melody. From a while ago, I, it, it was a part of just a completely different song. It wasn't even really a song, we just did play it, we just used to play it live sometimes. Yeah. And then I read somewhere, I think, Kevin, that Feels Like We Only Go Backwards came to you when you were watering the garden. Is that right? Yeah, I was definitely watering the garden <laughs> at some stage uh, in the process. Um, yeah, I think, I think that's where I was. I just, I just remember I had to water the garden furiously because we were about to get kicked out of our house <laughs> because it was brown. Oh, the old brown lawn. Uh -huh. Yes, got it. Yeah, got the, it. the landlord wasn't happy. <laughs> so I've got a question for you. How did you wind up living in Paris? What brought you there? Yeah. Um, well, my girlfriend lives there, so I just moved over to sort of share the load of um, back and forth, you know, because it's a long way to Paris. So um, it just seemed like a good idea at the time. like. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I still don't really know why. <laughs> We've left Dom out so I far. I know. I've got to ask Sorry, you, um, Dom. <laughs> what's your pre-gig ritual? Uh, if you have one, that is, of course. Not really, because you never really know what your day leading up to the gig's going to be like. Okay. Occasionally, the van will just show up and you'll get thrown on stage. So I try not to be too kind of superstitious about having a routine. I like to have a beer before we play. I think everyone said that today. <laughs> yeah, it's been the recurring theme, hasn't it? And, you know, obviously we're at Groovin today. It's a great regional Australian festival. But you guys have also got some massive festival dates coming up as well this year, you know, post Coachella. What else is coming up in the next couple of months for you? Uh, Dom. <laughs> <laughs> we're playing Primavera in Spain in like a month. Wicked. That'd be cool. Amazing. Yeah. After that, I'm a bit uh, hazy as far as what we're doing. And have you set a time to wrap up touring on Lonerism and um, take a break? Or? I don't know, I guess the powers that be haven't uh, haven't decided to pull the plug on it yet. So show me your wristbands, have you got some souvenirs from previous festivals? Yeah, I just there? haven't bothered to take them off yet. Which um, ones are they? Can you talk us through which Well, we got the Coachella? second weekend artist area, Coachella. This was some after party we got asked to DJ at, but none of us knew what we were doing. And we only had one, like, iPod, so it was a disaster. <laughs> this is uh, the pass that allowed us to watch Phoenix to the side of stage. Nice. This one got us into the Phoenix after party. And this was some ridiculous Rolling Stone uh, gifting. The gifting is uh, where you go into a room and there's lots of um, people with, like, um, little, like, commercial stalls where they, like, give you free stuff. What and you kind of free stuff? I don't know, just the most ridiculous stuff. Like we got, I got a Heineken like beer dispenser mailed to my house. Oh my God. They were just like, you want one? And I was like, okay. <laughs> Do you guys have songs ready for next record? Um, so not, no songs ready, but just kind of ideas. Um, it's a bit all over the place at the moment. Got a, I got a few different ideas for just different things, and I'm gonna wait till I've got some time to like record properly and see what happens. Yeah. Cool. Well, we absolutely love Lonerism, and it's been so cool talking to you both, and we can't wait to see your set tonight. Dom and Kevin from Tame Impala, thank you so much. No worries. Thanks for being with us.